Josh Furstein. <sighs> Sorry, that actually wasn't a deep enough or loud enough sigh to convey my actual level of dismay at this moment. Let me try again. <sighs> <laughs> All right. So today on TJ's Freak Show, come and see the amazing idiot refute scientific concepts that he doesn't even understand with rhetoric that doesn't even make sense. And as you watch him speak, I want you to realize that this video that we're about to be reviewing has over 7,000 likes and 12,000 shares on Facebook. And this man's Facebook page has 475,000 likes. Granted, 450,000 of them probably just think that they're liking a Kevin James page since he bears a striking resemblance. Um, but you have to kind of approach his videos the way that you would approach um, anal sex. You have to start really slowly. So let's start by just listening to the first 10 seconds, and then we can stop uh, for a moment and discuss what's going on. So uh, we're going to do this. I know a lot of you are probably scared, but... <sighs> Guys, it's Josh Fierstein here, so let's not only destroy and debunk evolution, but I want to show you that it actually takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does to actually believe in God. So here we go. Okay, so um, right now you probably feel a pressure building in your head. Uh, just give it a few hard slaps. Ah. And if that's not enough, just bang your head on the nearest wall or desk for several seconds until the pain of impact overwhelms any sense of despondence that Josh's uh, sheer stupidity has no doubt instilled in you. <sighs> Damn it. I'm too fat to bang my head on my desk. My belly gets in the way. Maybe that's an evolutionary adaptation. Um, anyway, let's see what else Josh has got rattling around in his um, brain, I guess. You see, evolution tells us that we're the product of the evolving of a protein molecule. A protein molecule... Okay, so no. Right off the bat, no. Um, there are several hypotheses about the origins of life on Earth, including your silly God hypothesis, which was thoroughly trounced by particle physicist Victor J. Stenger in his book God, The Failed Hypothesis, How Science shows that God does not exist. Anyway, none of the hypotheses make the claim that we evolved from protein molecules. The first life form was a simple prokaryotic self-replicating cell formed by many organic molecules. So we're 15 seconds into your video and already you've proven that you haven't the faintest fucking clue what you are talking about. Congratulations that happened by accident or by simple chance. And yet even science would say that that chance is 1 in the 10 to the 243rd power. That's 10 with 243 zeros after it. Now that's a number that we can't even begin to comprehend, but allow me to try to break it down for you. That's like if everybody in the world played the lottery, that's your chances of hitting the lottery a trillion times in a row. Damn, a trillion, a trillion fucking times in a row? Are you kidding me? Wow. Maybe you're right. Actually, um, we actually don't know how likely or unlikely the formation of the first life form was. You somehow have a specific probability, but that's impossible because science doesn't have a specific probability. So let's say that the formation of life is extraordinarily unlikely. Not as unlikely as you're saying it is, but let's say the odds are 1 in 10 trillion. I don't think they're anywhere near that high, but let's just say they are. There's probably at least a septillion stars in the universe. That's a 1 followed by 24 zeros. That's the low estimate. For all we know, it could be more than that. Perhaps many more. So, I mean, it could be infinitely more. We don't even know. 
So even if the chance of life emerging is insignificantly tiny, it's bound to happen in many places because the universe is so big and there are just so many places out there. How ridiculous of a number is that? And if even we were able to believe that somehow life sprang out of that accident, well, there's the law of cause and effect, which means that the universe that we live in is an effect, but out of what cause? We live in a universe of cause and effect, uh, but we know that cause and effect don't work the same way on the quantum level. So there's already observable scientific phenomena that don't really behave in that way that our human common sense tells us they will. And just because we live in a universe of cause and effect doesn't mean the universe itself had to have a cause. You can't apply the logic of our universe to the origin of the universe. Because we don't know what their laws of existence were prior to the Big Bang. We don't even know if there was an existence prior to the Big Bang. Time itself was probably created in the Big Bang. So there was no before. It's as theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking said, when people ask me if a god created the universe, I tell them the question itself makes no sense. Time didn't exist before the Big Bang, so there is no time for God to make the universe in. It's like asking directions to the edge of the Earth. The Earth is a sphere. It doesn't have an edge. So looking for it is a futile exercise. It has to have a cause. I would argue that that cause is God. Now, if somehow that protein molecule was able to evolve and molecule. evolution was able to somehow come into being, that means that now that monkey would become man. But let me just ask you this. If evolution is an ongoing process, why do we not see any half-human, half-apes today? I think I'm actually looking at one right now. Um, Once again, um, you don't understand evolution. Um, first of all, chimpanzees are more than half human. We share 99% of our DNA in common with chimps. Does that mean that chimps will eventually evolve into human beings? Uh, no. Humans are not the pinnacle of evolution, nor do organisms necessarily evolve to become smarter or more cognitively developed. A chimp is every bit as evolved as we are, but its adaptations didn't involve the same level of cognitive awareness that we have. Well, some of us have. Most of us, not you. Wouldn't monkeys still be evolving into man, and wouldn't we see those around us that hadn't quite caught up to us yet? Yeah, once again, and yet, looking at it. evolution has no answer for that. In fact, if you really want to get down to what I call the moral law of it all, mm. You know, evolution cannot, even if it thinks it can somehow explain life, it cannot explain thought. Oh. It cannot explain feelings. Mm -hmm. It cannot explain emotion. And it cannot explain morality. Tide goes in, tide goes out. You can't explain that. Fucking magnets. How do they work? I don't want to talk to a scientist. Motherfuckers lying and getting me pissed. Uh, you say evolution cannot explain these things. It can, actually. Um, so why don't you shut your fucking mouth and open a fucking book? Other than uh, the one book that you have read, which was written by a bunch of bloodthirsty, misogynist sheep fuckers of antiquity. Why don't you learn some actual science so that you can realize that, no, we didn't evolve from a fucking protein molecule, okay? That doesn't even make sense. You don't even know what a fucking molecule is. And no, we don't know the probability of life forming by chance. And no, evolution doesn't mean we should see half-human, half-monkeys everywhere. And yes, the brain is an evolved organ that has a long evolutionary history and behaviors and thoughts and feelings can therefore be explored through the tools of evolution through fields like cognitive neuroscience. I don't know why you're so obsessed with the origin of thought anyway, since you're obviously using your brain very little. You don't care to actually understand the world around you using uh, the scientific method, and you scoff at the notion of any sort of objective, verifiable, empirical evidence. You'd rather believe in a fairy tale. And that's your choice. 
Fine, that's your fucking choice. If that's what you want to believe, you go right ahead and believe it. But don't make these videos claiming that your fairy tale has somehow proven science wrong. And that you understand better than actual scientists what science means, what science is, what science can explain. You have no such expertise, and when you pretend to, all you're doing is embarrassing yourself. You see, no matter where in the world you grow up, pretty much everybody knows that there's a difference between right and wrong. To kill a human or to do harm against somebody else, it makes us feel bad inside. Why? Well, science didn't give that to us. Evolution didn't give that to us. It can't explain that. Actually, it can. And don't get me wrong, it hasn't yet, not fully. Uh, the brain is still um, a puzzle whose mysteries are being unlocked. But we learn more about it all the time, and it definitely appears that uncovering the reasons behind morality and empathy will involve um, sociobiology, evolutionary psychology, and many of the neurosciences. It, it won't involve surrendering our will to an ancient book that people have been fighting about for 2,000 fucking years. A book uh, of nonsense, full of contradictions, full of immorality, full of shit. The Bible, um, it's interesting, sure, as, uh, as mythology, but that's all it is. A book of myths that once uh, was believed by primitive people. And no one has any business today believing in God and angels and talking snakes and people being turned into pillars of salt and virgin births and water and a wine and walking on water and so on and fucking so forth. <sighs> that God writes those things, those precepts up on our heart. That means that there's a moral law that all of humanity understands and knows, and yet it's not something that was legislated in Congress. It's something that was legislated in our heart. In fact, I would argue today that the reason and the problem with humanity today or the reason that there's so much suicide and depression and, and, and racism and all of these things where we don't value each other is because people have begun over the last 30, 40, 50 years to begin to adopt this, this evolutionary theory as somehow it's fact. Mm. Well, it is fact. And the idea that evolution is responsible for all our social ills is flat out fucking retarded. There's always been suicide and depression. I mean, even people's fucking pets get depressed, okay? Racism, I mean, you, you think that's a recent development? Have you forgotten about the slave trade? Have you forgotten that most churches supported the slave trade, citing slavery in the Bible as the moral basis of, hey, this is okay. Look, even God says it's okay. This was going on before Darwin ever fucking set pen to paper to write on the origin of fucking species. The fucking is, is my own flourish. That's not the actual title. Um, okay, well, let's, uh, let's wrap this shit up. And so people begin to believe that they're a product of an accident and not a product of a creator. Therefore, their life, well, their life has no meaning. It has no value. It was simply an accident. That means that we don't value mm. ourselves, mm. therefore we don't value mm. you know. others. Mm -hmm. Think mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Think about it. Let's think about it. Hmm. Better think about what this guy just said. Um, actually, no. Let's not think about it. It's not worth thinking about. It's just a line of fear-mongering bullshit to keep people scared of exploring the humbling truth about who the human race really is and where we really came from. And it's a truth that we should all recognize. We're not the special children of a loving God. We are the result of billions of years of natural processes at work, and we share a common ancestor with every other living thing on this planet. Our consciousness does not continue after death, and there is no all-powerful being who is looking out for us at all times. Um, yeah, I, you, you, you can either cringe in fear of those truths, like a fucking coward, like a fucking pussy, or you can learn about them and face the reality that we presently understand. Reality is we presently understand it. The path of denial 
the path of, of blithely ignoring the evidence and saying, no, it was all Jesus, it was all God. That path leads to a life squandered, worshiping an invisible, ghostly, patriarchal figure in the fucking sky. The, the biggest despot of all time, God. God said this. God said that. God didn't say shit. There is no God. God does not fucking exist. Now the path of acceptance, the path of accepting science, the, the, the path of basing your criteria of belief on evidence rather than faith, that could lead to the dawning of a new age of reason. And the choice is yours, Josh. The choice is yours, and the choice is every single person's on this planet. I think you've got a brain in there somewhere, buddy. It's time to start using it. Maybe this whole evolutionary concept that has become popularized over the last few decades is the reason that there's suicide, depression, racism, and all That's of the absurd. things wrong in this world. Maybe it's yeah. time for you to understand that you were created by a God that loves you, that has a purpose and a future and a destiny for you. And that is my argument for God and against evolution. Okay. Well, it's a lousy argument. Uh, it's a lousy argument for God. It's an even lousier argument against evolution. Um, that's really all I have to say. I'm the Amazing Atheist. Peace the fuck out. If you enjoy my videos, we are once again selling copies of my book, The Douchebag Bible. It is on sale. You can buy personalized signed editions of The Douchebag Bible down below. The link is right down there as well as all, uh, excuse me, all of my social media links. And you can also uh, check out my t-shirts. You know, there's lots of stuff on sale, lots of stuff to follow. And also, please subscribe to my channel if you're not currently a subscriber. I really do appreciate the support. Thank you very kindly. Once again, I'm the Amazing Atheist. Fuck the out. Peace. Over 7,000 likes and 12,000 shares on Facebook. And this man's Facebook page has 475,000 likes. Granted, 450,000 of them probably just think that they're liking a Kevin James page since he bears a striking resemblance. Um, but you have to kind of approach his videos the way that you would approach um, anal sex. You have to start really slowly. So let's start by just listening to the first 10 seconds and then we can stop uh, for a moment and discuss what's going on. So uh, we're going to do this. I know a lot of you are probably scared, but... <sighs> Guys, it's Josh Fierstein here. So let's not only destroy and debunk evolution, but I want to show you that it actually takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does to actually believe in God. So here we go. Okay. So um, right now you probably feel a pressure trounced by particle physicist Victor J. Stenger in his book, God, The Failed Hypothesis, How Science shows that God does not exist. Anyway, none of the hypotheses make the claim that we evolved from protein molecules. The first life form was a simple prokaryotic self-replicating cell formed by many organic molecules. So we're 15 seconds into your video and already you've proven that you haven't the faintest fucking clue what you are talking about. Congratulations. Kill that happened by accident or by simple chance. And yet even science would say that that chance is 1 in the 10 to the 243rd power. That's 10 with 243 zeros after it. Now that's a number that we can't even begin to comprehend, but allow me to try to break it down for you. That's like if everybody in the world played the lottery, that's your chances of hitting the lottery a trillion times in a row. Damn, a, tri a trillion fuck- Josh... Furstein. <sighs> Sorry, that actually wasn't a deep enough or loud enough sigh to convey my actual level of dismay at this moment. Let me try again. <sighs> <sighs>
All right. So today on TJ's Freak Show, come and see the amazing idiot refute scientific concepts that he doesn't even understand with rhetoric that doesn't even make sense. And as you watch him speak, I want you to realize that this video that we're about to be reviewing has over building in your head. Uh, just give it a few hard slaps. Ah. And if that's not enough, just bang your head on the nearest wall or desk for several seconds until the pain of impact overwhelms any sense of despondence that Josh's uh, sheer stupidity has no doubt instilled in you. <sighs> Damn it. I'm too fat to bang my head on my desk. My belly gets in the way. Maybe that's an evolutionary adaptation. Um, anyway... Let's see what else Josh has got rattling around in his um, brain, I guess. You see, evolution tells us that we're the product of the evolving of a protein molecule. A protein molecule... Okay, so no. Right off the bat, no. Um, there are several hypotheses about the origins of life on Earth, including your silly God hypothesis, which was thoroughly... ...ten times in a row? Are you kidding me? Wow! Maybe you're right. Actually, um, we actually don't know how likely or unlikely the formation of the first life form was. You somehow have a specific probability, but that's impossible because science doesn't have a specific probability. So let's say that the formation of life is extraordinarily unlikely. Not as unlikely as you're saying it is, but let's say the odds are 1 in 10 trillion. I don't think they're anywhere near that high, but let's just say they are. There's probably at least a septillion stars in the universe. That's a one followed by 24 zeros. That's the low estimate. For all we know, it could be more than that. Perhaps many more. So, I mean, it could be infinitely more. We don't even know. So even if the chance of life emerging is insignificantly tiny, it's bound to happen in many places because the universe is so big and there